So this verse is spoken by Lord Kapiladev, who is actually the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Showing compassion to all living entities, you will attain self-realization. Giving assurance of safety to all, you will perceive your own self as well as the universe is in me and myself in you. I'll repeat. Showing compassion to all living entities, you will attain self-realization. Giving assurance of safety to all, you will perceive your own self as well as all universes in me and myself in you. Hmm. Purport. And it's a long purport, so I'll, I'll s skip parts of it and, and just focus on certain parts. The simple process for self-realization for every living entity is described here. The first principle to be understood is that this world is a product of the Supreme Will. There is an identity of this world with the Supreme Lord. This identity is accepted in a misconceived way by the impersonalists. They say that the Supreme Absolute Truth, transforming himself into the universes, loses his separate existence. Thus they accept the world and everything in it to be the Lord. That is pantheism, wherein everything is considered to be the Lord. This is the view of the impersonalists, but those who are personal devotees of the Lord take everything to be the property of the Supreme Lord. Everything, whatever we see, is the manifestation of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, everything should be engaged in the service of the Lord. This is oneness. The difference between the impersonalist and the personalist is that the impersonalist does not accept the separate existence of the Lord, but the personalist accepts the Lord. He understands that though he distributes himself in so many ways, the Lord still has his personal existence. This is described in Bhagavad Gita. I am spread all over the universe in my impersonal form, Everything is resting on me, but I am not present. There is a nice regard, example regarding the sun and the sunshine. The sun, by its sunshine, is spread all over the universe, and all the planets rest on the sunshine. But all the planets are different from the sun planet. One cannot say that because the planets are resting on the sunshine, these planets are also the sun. Similarly, the impersonalist or pantheistic view that everything is God is not a very intelligent proposal. The real position as explained by the Lord himself is that although nothing can exist without him, it is not a fact that everything is him. He is different from everything. So here also the Lord says, you will see everything in the world to be non-different from me. This means that everything should be considered a product of the Lord's energy, and therefore everything should be employed in the service of the Lord. One's energy should be utilized for one's self-interest. That is the perfection of the energy. This energy can be utilized for real self-interest if one is compassionate. A person in Krishna consciousness, a devotee of the Lord, is always compassionate. He is not satisfied that only he himself is devotee, but he tries to distribute the knowledge of devotional service to everyone. There are many devotees of the Lord who, race, who face many risks in distributing devotional service to the Lord to the people in general. This should be done. It is also said that a person who goes to the temple of the Lord and worships with great devotion, but who does not show sympathy to people in general or show respects to others' devotees is considered to be a third-class devotee. The second-class devotee is he who is merciful and compassion to the fallen souls. The second-class devotee is always aware of his position as the eternal servant of the Lord. He therefore makes friendship with devotees of the Lord, acts compassionately towards the people in general, in teaching them devotional service, and refuses to cooperate or associate with non-devotees. 
As long as one is not compassionate to people in general, his devotional service of the Lord, he is a third-class devotee. The first-class devotee gives assurance to every living entity that there is no fear of this material existence. Let us live in Krishna consciousness and conquer the ignorance of material existence. It is indicated here that Kardama Muni was directed by the Lord to be very compassionate and liberal in his householder life and give assurance to the people in his renounced life. A sannyasi, one who is in a renounced order of life, is meant to give enlightenment to the people. He should travel, going from home to home, to enlighten. The householder, by spell of maya, becomes absorbed in family affairs and forgets his relationship with Krishna. If he dies in forgetfulness like the cats and dogs, then his life is spoiled. It is duty of a sannyasi, therefore, to go and awaken the forgetful souls with enlightenment of their eternal relationship with the Lord and engage them in devotional service. The devotee should show mercy to the fallen souls and also give them assurance of fearlessness. As soon as one becomes a devotee of the Lord, he is convinced that he is protected by the Lord. Fear itself is afraid of the Lord. Therefore, what has he to do with fearfulness? To award fearlessness to the common man is the greatest act of charity. A sannyasi, or one who is in the renounced order of life, should wander from door to door, village to village, town to town, from country to country, all over the world, as far as he is able to travel, and enlighten the householders about Krishna consciousness. A person who is a householder and is initiated by a sannyasi has a duty to spread Krishna consciousness at home. As far as possible, he should call his friends and neighbors to his house and hold classes in Krishna consciousness. Holding a class means chanting the holy name of Krishna and speaking from Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam. There are immense literatures for spreading Krishna consciousness and it is the duty of each and every householder to learn about Krishna from his sannyasi spiritual master. There is a division of labor in the Lord's service. The householder duty is to earn money because the sannyasi is not supposed to earn money but is completely dependent on the householder. The householder should earn money by business or by profession and spend at least 50% of his income to spread Krishna consciousness. Haribo. <laughs> 25% can be spent for his family, and 25% should be used to save for emergency. This example was shown by Rupa Goswami, and devotees should follow it. So there's more to do. I'll finish. It's not so much more. Actually, to be one with the Supreme Lord to be, means to be one in interest with the Lord. Becoming one with the Supreme Lord does not imply becoming as great as the Supreme Lord. It is impossible. The part is never equal to the whole. The living entity is also always a minute part. Therefore, his oneness with the Lord is that he is interested in the one interest of the Lord. The Lord wants every living entity to always think about him and to be his devotee and always worship him. This is clearly stated in Bhagavad Gita, Manmana Bhavabhad Bhakta. Krishna wants everyone always to think of him. Everyone should always offer obeisances to Krishna. This is the will of the Supreme Lord and a devotee should try to fulfill his desire. Since the Lord is unlimited, his desire is also unlimited. There is no stoppage, and therefore the service of the devotee is also unlimited. In the transcendental world, there is unlimited competition between the Lord and the servitor. The Lord wants to fulfill his desires unlimitedly, and a devotee also serves him to fulfill his unlimited desires. There is an unlimited oneness of interest between the Lord and his devotee. Om Ajnan Timirandasya Gina Jina Salakaya Chaksu Unmilita Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapita Mena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swampadantikam 
Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm, so... There is an unlimited competition between God and his devotee. And the competition is to see who can serve more. The devotee tries to serve the Lord, the Lord tries to serve his devotee. Jai Sisi Panchatattva Ki Jai. And no one can compete with the Lord and win. But sometimes the Lord loses just out of love, <laughs> just to make his devotee become glorified. So here there is something very really interesting, is that the, the devotee knows that the Lord has desires, because the Lord is a person. When you speak about person, you speak about characteristics, qualities, and of course, desires. Desire. Person means desire. So the Lord also has desires, and His desire is that everyone come back to Him in loving devotional service. Why does He desire that? Because He loves every living entity, and He knows this is the best thing for every living entity. To give them something less, he knows is not the best thing. So his main desire is to see everyone become his devotee. Actually, everyone is his devotee. No one can become his devotee. We can only just forget that we're not his devotee. Jivar, Surubai, Krishnara, Nichidas. Everyone is a devotee of the Lord. That is our nature. That can never be changed, it can only be forgotten. And that forgetfulness causes the living entity to suffer. And so because of that suffering, the Lord, Prabhupada also says, he feels some pain. It's the pain of a loving father who sees the child is not getting what he needs to become happy. And so out of love, there is the pain of feeling for the, the beloved or the loved one. So the Lord feels a little pain seeing that the living entities are foolishly trying to make a arrangement in this world to be happy. And therefore they just keep suffering. That's all. Michi Mayara Vesai Kacho Habu Vai Jeev Krishna Das E Vishwash Kalida Adukanai Life after life being tossed from one place to another the living entity forgets his actual position in relationship to the Lord and tries to find happiness in this material world through friends, family, and various types of activities. Only to die like a dog and then again take birth again and to try again. And sometimes one doesn't even get a human birth and has to live in a lower species of life because of excessive sinful life. So, so this causes the Lord to feel unhappy. He's always happy, but it's the unhappiness of love. That's all. In his home of himself, he is always Atmaram, he's self-contained. He's always in, his nature is blissful. But because he is a being and he has desires, he also wants to see all everyone else to experience happiness also. And so he empowers his devotees to act on his behalf to try to save other conditioned souls. So to take up that mission of the Lord and to be his representative of bringing the conditioned souls back to him is the highest form of service to the Lord. There's a, there's a book, it's called, maybe you've seen it, Preaching is the Essence. It was published in 1977. <laughs> Maybe 
maybe a little bit before your time. <laughs> so, Prabhupada had made a statement, or a statement had arisen within our society, preaching is the essence. He said four things. He said, books are the basis, purity is the force, utility is the principle, preaching is the essence. So, we have given, you know, discussions on each of these points. And the basic principle is that um, our movement is a preaching movement. It's about expanding the mercy of Krishna to the conditioned souls, like that. And the greatest happiness one can experience in Krishna consciousness is to make another person Krishna conscious, or to bring another person to Krishna. Why is that happiness experienced by the devotee? Because the Lord is so pleased. And because the Lord is so pleased, that devotee feels the pleasure of the Lord within himself or herself. So this is the uh, principle of compassion. When we speak about compassion, we speak about something that is natural for the living entities to be. People are compassion to their friends or maybe to their family members and maybe to a few people within their society. Sometimes you see national interests. People are, well, you know, our country is the best. And they, we'd wave the flags just like um, just... Last week, Croatia was in the, you know, the, the football championship, right? And people are decorating their cars with Croatian flags. I've even seen in people's rear, and there's side mirrors on the car were colored up the Croatian flags. And all kinds of, you know, like national symbols to, you know, we are Croatian. Mm. <laughs> And we're going to win. I mean, this national spirit is so strong that people actually lose all sense of in, in intelligence. Uh, we've seen and it's experienced also that in these uh, cricket matches in India, where they also have this intense national spirit, um, when India loses, it's like the worst thing that could happen to the whole country. There was one man who committed suicide because India lost. <laughs> and that was documented. So that's how much people have absorbed themselves in this idea that I am a member of this country and my country is the best. When devotees hear this, they think it's ridiculous or silly or ludicrous. But this goes on in the world and people have this strong, strong sense of self-identity with something that is, has nothing to do with them. Either their family, I'm a member of this family, I'm a member of this nation, I'm a member of this club, I'm a member of this, you know, this culture. I'm a member of so many things. And because people don't have the, the real identity, they don't know who they really are, they create these false identities with all these extensions. And therefore they live according to that identity. And when you challenge that, they become happy, unhappy, or either angry like that. So, but real identity is to understand that uh, we're every living being is part and parcel of Krishna. So, to distribute knowledge is the highest form of welfare. <laughs> people like to do welfare work for other people. They open hospitals. They feed the poor. They uh, arrange for clothing for needy. They do so many things to alleviate some material difficulties. But actually, the highest welfare work is to give people knowledge. <laughs> because with knowledge, they can solve their own problems. And then the problems can go away. By doing material welfare work, it's like putting a bandage on a cancer victim. <laughs> You know, you are giving a cancer victim a, an aspirin. <laughs> he might he might get his headache away for a few minutes, but still he's going to die of cancer. <laughs> 
So it has no real benefit, this material welfare work, because it's temporary, and at the same time it doesn't reach to the real source of people's suffering. Real suffering is not to, not to know who you are and how, not to know what is your goal in life or direction in life. So therefore, the devotees of the Lord, they have the knowledge in the form of Prabhupada's teachings and his books and teachings of the Acharyas that have gone, gone before us. So the devotees think, if, I can, if these people can take a book and if they can learn and if they can actually change their life, then that is the greatest form of welfare work like that. And it is complete because once a person knows who they are and what is their goal in life, then they can solve all their problems. Jai Sisi Panchatattva Ki. So here, in the purport, Prabhupada makes a nice point. He says, the highest form of welfare work is to give fearlessness to the conditioned soul. Fear is the principle that pervades the world. It's everywhere. From the highest planet down to the lowest, as long as there is material activities, there is fear. Why the fear of death? means the fear of ending everything one lives for. <laughs> so people are fearful, and they're absorbed in counteracting their fear by two things. One, acting like there is no danger. And at the same time, living that as if there is so much danger. <laughs> it's almost contrary. <laughs> they push danger out of their mind because it scares them. But at the same time, they're making so many arrangements not to be overwhelmed by dangerous situations. And what is the highest form of spending by any country throughout the world? Military arrangements. They put most of their money, collected from the taxpayers, into armaments. Why? Because we have to have a lot of big arsenals to protect ourselves from other, you know, when we say, enemy-type countries, or possible countries that will be enemies like that. So this fear is there. Fear is there everywhere. And fear means two. Mm -hmm. The number two. This is a nice exp explanation of what fear is. Sometimes devotees uh, are not clear what it means to be fear, uh, fearless. Fearless means to, to see beyond, not to see two, but to see one. Two means I see something other than Krishna. <laughs> one means I see only Krishna. So for a devotee, if everything is Krishna and everything is arranged by Krishna, what is the fear? Because <laughs> I am Krishna's devotees. Prabhupada gives an example of his own life, how in 1919 or 18, maybe, he was, in, uh, he was in Calcutta during the First World War. And he was in his home. And uh, the British... He was living in the British area, and so the Germans were bombing the British area. So before the bombs would go off, the sirens would go off, warning people, now you have to go to the bunkers, you have to go to the shelters, the bombs are coming. So Prabhupada was in his home, and it was in the evening time, and his wife had just made kachoris. The Prabhupada liked kachoris. <laughs> There's a name for Prabhupada, it's a nickname. His mother gave it to him, he's called Kachuri Muki. <laughs> Muki means face. <laughs> Prabhupada, and his mother used to make him Kachuris and stack them on the table, and all day he would eat Kachuris like that, when he was a boy, a little kid. He loved Kachuris, so if you want to cook something, those of you who are cooks, try to make some Kachuris for Prabhupada. <laughs> He'll be very pleased. So his wife had just finished the, the evening meal, and his friend was there, and the bombs went off. And his friend said, Abai, Prabhupada's name was Abai Charan, 
let us go to the bunkers. And Prabhupada said, never mind, you go. It is time for supper. <laughs> and then the man went and Prabhupada stayed. And Prabhupada describes the bombs as they were coming. He was hearing them. And he said, here comes Krishna in the form of a bomb. <laughs> So he was seeing that this is God coming in this particular form. So this is fearlessness. The devotee has no fear because he knows that everything is actually Krishna or arranged by Krishna, either directly or indirectly through the material energy. Nothing happens without the will of the Lord. Either he permits something to happen or he wants something to happen. Krishna is the most powerful controller. And so when he permits something to happen, that is called material activities. He allows the conditioned souls to act according to their foolishness. And so, but that is also Krishna. <laughs> Because he says, Chirasa for Savasya Jaham Ridisani Visto Matat Smitir Kyanamaho. I give you knowledge, I give you forgetfulness, and I also give you remembrance. So everything is coming from Krishna. So a devotee knows there's no fear. So he preaches Krishna consciousness. If you take up this move understanding of this philosophy, you will become free from fear. So to award fearlessness to the conditioned soul is the highest form of awarding because everyone lives in fear. <laughs> everyone has. And the more a person becomes absorbed in material activities, the greater the fear is. <laughs> so therefore, a devotee wants to help Krishna by... Pleasing Krishna, satisfying Krishna, by giving Krishna consciousness to others in different ways. Now we can explore this a little bit deeper. <laughs> and we will have a few more classes on this subject. There will be three more classes. But one of the things is, what are some of the ways, I'll ask you also, think about this. What are the, some of the ways that we can spread Krishna consciousness? It's an easy question, but think. Now, you may know the standard ways, but what are some of the ways that we can bring Krishna consciousness to the conditioned souls? In the means of giving this knowledge in one form or another. What's what's the foremost way? Become Krishna conscious yourself. Well, that's the. Prabhupada also mentions that before you can give something, you also have to have what you're going to give. So that is there. But to whatever degree we can become Krishna conscious, and we can also bring that same degree to others. And we can even sometimes inspire others to take up Krishna consciousness beyond what we, beyond our own level of realization by connecting them with the process itself. So what are some of the ways? That's the main thing, become Krishna conscious. Yes. I mean, so easy. What's the most thing, what is the thing we do all the time? By chanting the holy names of the Lord, having kirtan. Okay, and spreading the glories of the holy name. That's preaching. What's another way? Organize programs. Hmm? Organize programs. Organize different programs, and what do we do? Uh, give association. Give association. Prasadam. Huh? Prasadam. Prasadam, yeah. Prasadam distribution, that's preaching, yes. What else? Krishna Kata. Krishna Kata, yeah. So that's a program. Usually that makes up a program, the holy name. Krishna Kata and Prashadam. What's the thing that's the foremost? I can't believe it. Nobody's even said it. Book, Book distribution. <laughs> Book distribution, yes. Yeah, if they, if they get a book, they're on their way. <laughs> Prabhupada wrote this uh, letter to the German disciples 
German book distribution devotees, disciples, in 1977, May 6, 1977. You can read the letter. He said, he glorified book distribution, and he said, if a person takes a book, or if a person reads the book, or if they just take the book, or if they, if they touch the book, or if they just see the book, <laughs> they're benefited. You can read that letter. It's a real, what we say, fundamental letter to show the power of book distribution. That's why doing book distribution, Prabhupada said, is the best way to preach in this age. We do so many other forms, but that that always remains foremost because we we giving transcendental knowledge in the form of Krishna and these beautiful books that are so nicely composed that people want to even see the book. The cover itself is attractive. What is another way we do? What's another way that we can? spread Krishna consciousness. Yes. Anybody? Thank you. Show my example. Yeah, that's what Prabhu said. He mentioned in Become Krishna Conscious. Show by example. Okay. In other words, practice what you preach. What's another? What's some of the programs that we can do? That's what I'm talking about. Programs. Bhakti Vriksha. Bhakti Vriksha. Okay. Good. Nam what else? Nam Hat. Nam Hat. What's Sangha. Sanghas. What else? Festivals. Festivals. Good. Now you're getting it. What's another one? Hmm. Hmm. Camps. Camps, summer camps. What are you going to be doing in a couple of days? Padayatra. Hey, that is powerful. What else? Rathiatras. What else? Come on, this is, I have a list of about 35 listings here. Right now. What else? Hmm? Farm communities, teaching people how to live normal life, simple living, high thinking. Yes, what else? Radio, TV, Radios, get on them. We got people who know us, who are in the media here. Yeah, connect with the media, radio, TV. What else? What's the other form of media? Facebook. <laughs> hmm? Facebook. Internet. Internet. Okay, yeah, there's one devotee who's, he's got 10,000 people on his internet he preaches to regularly. He's developed internet preaching. Powerful. He keeps uh, 10,000 people connect with him through their various programs on the internet. What else? What do I do? Prisons. Prisons, okay. <laughs> Going to prisons. Ananda Vardhana, he likes that. What else? Colleges. Colleges. What's the other one below that? Schools. High schools, grammar schools. What else? Elderly homes. Hmm? Elderly homes. Elderly homes. Homes for the old ages. No that. Yes. What's another form? Hospital. Hmm? Hospital. Hospitals. Good. Go to hospitals. Jail. We said that. <laughs> what do we have down the street? Hmm? Honey, not restaurant. Yes, that's preaching. What else? What do we do once a week? Sunday feast. Okay. What else? Nam Yagyas. Okay. Holy name retreats. Hmm. Holy name retreats. Holy name retreats. Very good. Seminars. Seminars. Good. That's listed here. Huh? What else? 
Yeah, invite people and take them on a tour. Go to Yatras, to the India. What else? What else is a way of preaching? Yoga. Huh? Cooking courses. Cooking courses. I have it down here, yeah. Cooking classes. Teaching people how to make prasadam and then give them Prabhupada's books, yeah. So many things. What do we do? What is our great, this, uh, this very wonderful lady here, what did she do? Yoga is music. Yeah, yoga lady. She's... <laughs> She's a yo real yogi. <laughs> she brings yoga people in. So, what else? I got a few more here I haven't mentioned. Teaching course for playing instruments in Bhajan. Teaching people how to play instruments, yeah. Okay, that's, that's good. Life membership, how's that? Do you have a program for that? Not quite, not quite. That's mostly done with the... But you can do that. You can start a life membership program. Um, dioramas. That's big in many parts of the world, doing dioramas. If you go to Detroit, they, they have a whole building of dioramas where they depict Krishna Leelas for the guests. Animatronics, dioramas, so many things. Our temple in Delhi has animatronics. Radio, radio TV. When I was here, we did an, I did an, an interview with a lady from a very prominent magazine. Remember that one? That lady who came? She interviewed me and published it in the magazine. I forgot that magazine, but it was one of the more popular magazines in in Slovenia. Aura. Hmm? Aura. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So magazines, newspapers, TV, radio, and one thing we forgot. Children. Children. Children's programs teach the kids, and that way, when they grow up, they'll be inspired to. Preach Krishna consciousness also. What's another way we do? This is this is a big one. We forgot this one. Sometimes, sometimes we, we are in different years when we engage in life, and we maybe less time with devotees outside. Then we can bring them Krishna consciousness with prasadam or something. Then we are, we are part of certain groups. I don't know. Connect with outside groups and bring them here. Right. This is really good. I just. Hmm. One of our devotees. This is yeah. This is this is a good. This is really good. I was just with this Croatian football team, one of our devotees, Mahananda. He has uh, what we call pumpkin seeds that he sells. So he went to the football matches and was selling pumpkin seeds and saying that if you buy the pumpkin seeds and you eat these pumpkin seeds, Croatia will win. <laughs> And they were buying the pumpkin seeds. He, he made so much money. <laughs> he was preaching Croatia through pumpkin seeds. <laughs> and was, was, was prashadam anyway. <laughs> so he was giving prashadam like that. I mean, that's a little thin, but it was something. <laughs> and he was dressed in a dhoti, so that was good to know. Anyway. Um, there's one big form of preaching that you haven't mentioned yet. We bring our own festival to part of their festival. Like yeah. Hey, that's a great idea. Join their, join their festivals by making, you know, bringing the devotees as part of the... You know what we did in America? We're part of the gay and lesbian festivals in America. They're big. They have three-day festivals, gay and lesbian festivals. America is really distorted. So, that, the devotees were going to gay and lesbian. And 
and the gay and lesbians, they like Hare Krishna because they're rebellious and so are we, according to their understanding. So <laughs> they see us as being radicals too. <laughs> so they like us. <laughs> And we've sold so many books, <laughs> which tells them not to be gay, but anyway, they buy, <laughs> they buy it anyway. <laughs> okay, so I see there's two really powerful forms of preaching that hasn't been mentioned yet. Really powerful. But that we do. You can see, huh? Making huh? movies. Huh? Movies? Movies? Nice. That was, that's a good one, yeah. Bhakti Charu Maharaj has done that. And some of the other devotees have also done that, yeah. Bringing, because through media, especially today, people are really interested in the visual. Because they can't hear so good. Because their their brains are kind of dull. So, but they like to see things. But they can really pick up on the visual. So peach, preaching through videos, that, that visual media is really big. Pandavasena in, in, in London does a lot of that visual. Yes? Visiting holy places and uh, building temples. Building temples, visiting holy places, that's very, very powerful, especially visiting holy places. I think you also want to build a temple here, by the grace of the Lord. That's a very, just to, we're, 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 we're bringing these parts just to show how many varieties of ways one can get connected to some form of preaching, yes. Okay, and kind of like a symposium between various types of teachings, science and religion. You're getting real close to one thing that I was, I'm hinting at. Approaching class and leaders to the country. Yeah, we mentioned that last night, the importance of going to leaders who are in different positions and see if we can uh, present Krishna consciousness. Uh, there was one devotee who was going to offices and offering prasadam to the people in that particular office by contacting, because they have their coffee breaks and they have their, you know, snacks in the middle. So he was making cheesecake. And he was good at making cheesecake, so he was, he was selling his cheesecake to the offices. And then they were using that cheesecake to distribute it to the employees, like that. So that's, that's distributing prasadam. Interfaith. Interfaith preaching. Really big. I did that in America for many years. Uh, going to interfaith programs, becoming a part of that, dialoguing with other religious traditions. In fact, every time we did an interfaith conference, Chicago is where I was based, it's the headquarters of the World Parliament of Religions, which is the biggest interfaith uh, organization in the world. And uh, we were part of a, a, a local projects which had 36 different religions. And we did programs with them. And one of the things that they liked about us was our prasadam. So and every time we did a major festival, they asked us to cook. Because <laughs> they thought, this, you can't beat this stuff to Hare Krishna's God. So we were supplying prasadam and we were also presenting our philosophy like that. So I went to many, many big ones. They have a world, they have one every five years somewhere in the world where they do a big one. I did in Barcelona, Spain in 2004. We went to a real big one. Bhaktisrup Dhamara Maharaj came. I was there. Krishna Shetra Maharaj also came. And Shiva Ram Maharaj also came. And we presented our philosophy in different symposiums that went on for a whole week. 
of uh, activities. So that's really big interfaith. There was one in my book, right after about the group when I just departed. Mm-hmm. Really yeah, that was. In my book, he wanted one time in the future, but then for him, they did it right away. First one time. It was in honor of him? Yeah. It was a special, special ceremony, and many of them joined, and then people who knew him thought. Yeah, people actually in the secular world really have an appreciation for Maharaj because he really made friends and entered their lives in a very powerful way. Uh, He went to many of their conferences and also organized conferences. He did a big one in Bombay in 1995. It was huge. And there was books that was published based on that. So, yeah, interfaith preaching. And Prabhupada asked him to do that work. Yeah. Yeah, he's honored. He's a very, what we say, popular person in many, many circles, scientific circles and also in uh, interfaith circles, yes. Uh, I was going to say IOPS is uh, uh, leadership status. Mm hmm. And uh, different samskaras like uh, first grain and you know, initiation. And, right. You know. Taking part in those, organizing them. I must have fed so many babies in my life. <laughs> you know, families can, they come to me and say, Can you do the first grain ceremony for our child? And immediately I say yes. <laughs> And then, you know, we chant the holy names. We also chant the mantras that are part of the ceremony. Like that. And they feel very happy that the child has gotten the the, uh, anapras. It's called anapras. (laughs) But there's one major preaching that you haven't mentioned yet, and it's big. Ooh, you're really close. Yeah, that's it. Book publishing. Writing books and publishing books. <laughs> that's it. So devotees also take time and become inspired and also take Prabhupada's teachings and formulate it and present it in the form of their books. And what sometimes it's translated in different languages and distributed everywhere. Prabhupada said, flood the world with books. He said we should just have so many books that they, every place they go, they see a Hare Krishna book. And in Russia, it's like that. The devotees in Russia are so enthusiastic to distribute books that there have been statements by people from the outside that everywhere I go, I see a Hare Krishna book. In stores and libraries and on the streets. So, yeah. Book distribution follow pre- uh, follows book publishing, book writing, like that. So these are a few of the activities. Bhagavad Saptas. Uh, Radha Govinda Maharaj was doing Bhagavad Saptahas, calling people together, and for seven days he speaks from the Bhagavatam, like that. Uh, we have Bhaktivedanta Hospital in Mumbai, like that. The counselor systems, youth festivals, that's very big in in India, bringing uh, people from who are going to colleges into these different festivals, writing, creating and writing newsletters. That's another thing that we didn't mention. And of course, deity worship, that is also preaching when it's done with that mood. Okay, so we have so many things. I think we covered most of them. Indians yeah. outside India. Hmm? Indians outside India. Yeah, you could start that here. Indians outside of India. And they'll think, oh, now we'll come together as our culture and then... Uh, you can always, then from there you introduce Krishna. So we're just turning the whole gamut of ideas like that. 
So everyone should be involved in some kind of outreach program. Everyone. Whether you do it directly or through as part of a program. But get involved. <laughs> get involved with preaching. Don't stay in the temple and just look at the four walls. <laughs> or stay in the house and look at the four doors. <laughs> four windows. Get out and do something. Become part of these pro preaching programs. And it's very enlivening for devotees. And Krishna will give you so many ideas. Okay, so, any questions or comments to... Yes? Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned the uh, uh, programs. Mm -hmm. Today you mentioned uh, one of the preaching programs, also interfaith programs. Yeah. And on yesterday's... You should start that. You're good. You would do. You would be <laughs> great for that. Because you're good with the yoga people. And that's a little bit on that level. Start it. Meet some people from the outside. I actually, I'm neighbor of Mormons. And uh, I also have some Muslim friends that come to my dance classes. Mm -hmm. So I'm already kind of... Uh, yeah, associating with different religious groups. Uh, and yesterday you mentioned that um, somewhere in America uh, there was this interfaith programs, but then uh, gradually uh, devotees would leave to other religions. And uh, so I was uh, wondering how not to... Not too many left. <laughs> not too many? Yeah, a few were, in, were influenced because they were just... They weren't fixed in Krishna consciousness, mm. and they somehow or other gravitated to that. So if you're going to do interfaith preaching, it's for devotees who can do that. <laughs> it's not for everybody. So I was just wondering, uh, when you have these meetings, like you mentioned, that you are a part of uh, many of these interfaith meetings, uh, what's the dialogue between uh, different religious groups? It's like finding what you have in common, common right. values, or... Finding the common bond. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, when you connect there, you become a part of the recognized group of religions within the, your country, within the society, mm -hmm. eventually within the world. Mm -hmm. Then they accept us as a bona fide tradition. Mm -hmm. So we actually make some really strong allies mm -hmm. that if we ever get in trouble or discriminated against, they help us <laughs> and support us. Mm -hmm. The other thing, and the main thing, is that we try to talk about that the importance of worshiping God in your according to your own traditions. It's a, it's it's walking on ice. It's a little mm -hmm. difficult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to be careful to present it in such a way that it's not uh, challenging. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like that, we the idea is not to get into the and try to convince the other religions that we're the best. Mm -hmm. Uh, if mm -hmm. then it becomes a whole different mood and it breaks down. Mm -hmm. uh, one I, I have books on it. If you want, I can make these books available. Please. Mm -hmm. Books that are come as a result of these programs, and also books that were written, written, written by devotees. Mm -hmm. Articles that were written mm -hmm. by devotees. Other question is like. Um, uh, in Bhagavad Gita, it says if uh, you know if you uh, uh, if you uh, break your tradition, then gradually uh, the society decreases and there is uh, unwanted progeny and so on. And uh, so I, I'm wondering, you know, there are some arguments uh, if you're born into Christian family. And then if you switch to Hindu or, I don't know, Krishna consciousness, are you breaking your tradition? No. Very strong in Muslim also. Hmm? Muslims country got a very strong world. Well, yeah. Well, the thing is, we are not in the same understanding 
Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing you said about unwanted progeny, that, that has to do with varna sankara. Uh-huh. That is using sex life for sense gratification. Then you produce a whole group of people who uh-huh. are, when we come, coming in from lower planets, uh-huh. and then they per- permeate the society, and the society goes down. Women become polluted, and then you have unwanted children. But in what way does uh, Krishna mean in Bhagavad Gita, then, if you break one's tradition? In breaking tradition? I don't, I'm, I'm not exactly sure of the statement you're referring to. Yeah, it's in this verse. Um, I can't remember now. He was, uh, my, he was preaching to Arjuna. Yeah, right? yeah. This was the reasons, five reasons. Five reasons, yeah. Yeah, one was tradition. What is the tradition? One was the fear that we the tradition will be lost. Yeah. Yes, because the dynasty, the elders will be killed, and then mm-hmm. oh, the dynasty. Family tradition will be lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Krishna was using a mundane argument. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because Arjuna was on the mundane platform. Mm-hmm. So he was trying to defeat his mundane argument with another mundane argument, <laughs> like that. But in, we understand that all these ideas that I'm Hindu, I'm Muslim, I'm Jewish, I'm Christian, these are all designations. Mm-hmm. They don't have anything to do with the soul. Yeah. Nothing. Mm-hmm. The soul is a spiritual being. Mm-hmm. How we execute spiritual life is done by particular religious traditions that are considered to be authorized mm-hmm. traditions that have a set of scriptures and have a tradition that's coming from an, an acharya or an enlightened person mm-hmm. who started that mm-hmm. tradition. Now, there's a lot of bogus and there's a lot of genuine but but we are we understand that we're you know we, we call ourselves Hare Krishna because it's just a label mm. we are Sanatan Dharmis that mm. is our actual tradition mm. Sanatan means internal and Dharma means um, uh, religious principles so we follow eternal religious principles mm. which means that I am the eternal servant of the Supreme Personality of God. And that's the basis of our identity. <laughs> oh. So if people say you're Hindus, we're not Hindus. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've actually published in, uh, a pamphlet which explains that the word Hindu was inaugurated by the Parsi, uh, by the Persians. Mm-hmm who were seeing people on the other side of the Sindhu River as Hindus. Mm. And the word, they couldn't pronounce the S, so it came out Hindu. Mm. So we, people in that area of the world were labeled Hindus. But if you, Prabhupada says, you can't find that word anywhere in any scripture, Hindu. Mm. It's a geographical designation given by an outside country, that's mm-hmm. all. But it, it, it got adopted. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The other question that comes... What is Hinduism anyway? It's just a potpourri of various types of different cultures and more uh-huh. spiritual practices, that's mm-hmm. all. It's undefinable. Mm-hmm. You can't really define uh-huh. what is Hindu. Did I have another question. Uh, it's regarding um, uh, when you mentioned that uh, Prabhupada just finished his kachoris <laughs> and he saw, uh, you know, Krishna even in the bomb. And um, uh, my question is connected uh, how how to see actually just recently I uh, was uh, listening at um, Chaitanya Charan Prabhu uh, in Bhaktivedanta Manor and his, uh, he had this uh, lecture on um, how to see uh, bad events uh, in connection to Krishna and his ex- how to see? 
bad events that happen in our lives in connection to Krishna and mm. he, he says that uh, Krishna is the cause of all causes but not the cause of all effects because of our free will that uh, maybe sometimes we do follow Krishna then we cause the effects so mm -hmm. yeah. um, how does devotee then does devotee see Krishna I mean bad things like bombs falling actually as Krishna sending them or the well, the effects of there's you know, that verse in the, there's yeah. a verse in the Bhagavad Gita Krishna mm -hmm. is the overseer and permitter mm -hmm. he doesn't interfere with the independence of the living entities mm -hmm. so he allows the material energy to act according to its laws mm. And if people break the laws of the material energy, they mm. create havoc for themselves and for others. Mm -hmm. mm. If people are affected by anger and envy, and then they fight amongst each other. And then that, that fighting comes out in the form of wars. Mm. Right? So that means people are living outside of the laws of God and trying to exploit material nature for, for their own sense gratification therefore they come in competition with others who are doing the same thing and then there's conflict and that is what's going on in the world today everywhere so a devotee sees that as simply um, the material energy giving people the results of their karma that's all they're getting the results of their activities but when it happens to a devotee the devotee sees that, that there is something good in it because it's coming from Krishna and it's teaching me something or purifying me from something. Okay. So obstacles are not uh, impediments in a devotional life if we go beyond what is apparently happening to us and see what is the hand of God in this that we can learn from, we can grow from, like that. Because the devotee is always protected by the Lord, but still the Lord allows the devotees a little bit of suffering as a way to teach them. He doesn't give so much suffering that it destroys the devotee, but he gives it in a way he can teach them. I just recently translated a, a conference on logotherapy. I don't know if you're familiar with Viktor Frankl. On what? On logotherapy. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Viktor Frankl. Yeah. He's uh, yeah. Heard of him? Yeah. He he actually he was in um, concentration camp and uh, right. And uh, he undergo you know such a deep suffering and torment and uh, uh, even though all this uh, turmoil was happening around him and uh, you know he was starving and cold in this concentration camp he still uh, was able to find meaning in life so he was like actually preaching to prisoners there in the concentration camp so um this uh, I just uh, recently also was uh, 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 going through some Ayurvedic books, and uh, it's mentioned that um, uh, n not only our digestive fire, Krishna's our digestive fire, but it's also a sadaka fire that uh, one has. Uh, that's. Uh, uh, the capacity of uh, overcoming traumatic states in life. Mm -hmm. So, how, how to increase this uh, meaningfulness in uh, Krishna consciousness and to boost this sadhaka fire? How to be able to see all these things in a Krishna conscious way? Yeah, I mean, how in, in difficult situations in life, how one can, you know, really grasp on this uh, essence. To, yeah, we have to call out to Krishna for shelter. Yes. <laughs> and once you call out to Krishna for shelter, then, mm -hmm. then once you receive that shelter, then you can start to think, you know, how can, how can I respond mm -hmm. to this situation? Mm -hmm. 
Krishna protects his devotees, koti apati jani hi namai bhakta pranashati. He'll protect his devotees, but the devotees should act within the range of Krishna's instructions to get the full protection. If we act outside of the range of Krishna's instructions, he still protects us as a devotee, but because we're acting outside, we get a little bit of suffering because of that, mm -hmm. or difficulty. Krishna is allowing that just to bring us back to the full shelter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that. But you have to understand that for a devotee, Krishna is mm -hmm. always there. Mm -hmm. But if you forget Krishna, then mm -hmm. that's another thing. Mm -hmm. Don't forget Krishna. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's the idea, is to remember Krishna in all situations. Yes. And then there's no dangers. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. For one person, it may be a danger, and for another person, it's an opportunity to develop more attachment to Krishna. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, so I, I'm really happy to hear that you're connected with people in the other traditions. Um, if you could think of how maybe you can bring a little meeting and just sit down with some light prasadam and just discuss. That'll start something off, maybe. Have a little group discussion. And focus on the essence, or what is the connection between all of us. And it could turn into something big. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we're, it's where we do have to do Harinam today. So, so we'll stop here. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai.